hey guys welcome back to another exciting video tutorial today and in this video i'm going to share with you guys one of the best and easiest exception or error handling logic in the salesforce so let's get started all right so to give you guys a high level idea uh, in every single apex method we have uh, try and catch block basically this is one of the best practices to use try catch block anyway so we have a try block here and in this try block i'm going to write some you know a good logic that is a business logic basically that i have to perform and in this catch block this is where the magic is going to happen okay we are going to basically store our exception into an object that's the that's the only thing that we are going to do here so let's say your code you have written some code you have written a very complex logic here and uh, by some case you are you know in, in some case your logic is failing here your code is breaking basically let's say there is an attempt to dereference null object or you know any exception that you are getting that exception we will catch into this uh, catch block and after this we are going to basically whatever this exception is we are going to store the exception also we are going to store what that exception causes and what is the message basically and uh, the stack trace of that exception so you will it will pinpoint at what line what code is breaking basically now this is very very important in production scenarios basically because in production you cannot put a lot of debug logs there and at the same times if you have a lot of users uh, you cannot you know log in into that user and uh, check what exception uh, that user is getting so the best thing here is that store all these exceptions into, into a particular object record and then basically retrieve them so that is what we are going to do so to get started let's create our first object here so i have created one uh, demo org here one dev org and in this org i'm just going to create a new object okay now in this object i'm just going to name it uh, as error log you can name basically anything application log error log or any, any name you want basically then let's put a plural name and here basically what we are going to do is uh, we are going to give an auto number okay instead just uh, text here so I will just say e log display format let's say give this starting number will be one okay now you, you basically make sure you select this uh, you know all these things here uh, all the options basically and the most important thing is allow search okay this is very important these are all optional features basically but I prefer to keep a report where I can find where uh, like how many errors i'm getting monthly or you know weekly basis basically they uh, then again you have to basically select this also custom tab so we are going to create a custom tab as well just to you can query basically this data but it is better to have out of the box things so let's uh, select uh, all these things here now our custom object is now you it's up to you guys uh, for the security things you can just uh, make it so i have just created my error log custom object here now I have to create some fields again here so I'm going to create some custom fields here the very first thing I want to create is basically uh, a, a text field okay a text field I'm going to create here and in this text field I'm just going to name it as uh, the error message okay and length let's give it as 250 for now it's going to be less than this but you know it's, it's not a big deal now let's just uh, make things visible for all the users for now and save and new now i have created a one error message now i'm going to create uh, another field which is going to be my text area which will be the text area i'll keep it long for now okay i'll keep a long text area and uh, i'll just uh, make sure i'm using at least uh, it's going to be very less to be honest but let's keep this default as well now i'm going to make it the field name as a stack trace okay stack trace visible lines we can just give five for now usually there are three to four five lines uh and that's it okay now uh what we are going to do is we are going to use a salesforce apex exception class so let me just search apex exception class here i'm going to, i'm just going to show you guys in this class we have some built-in methods now these are all basically methods here if you see this gate calls gate line number gate message gate stack 
text string get type name init cause send message so all these things are basically here now basically we are going to use this get message and get stack trace string these are the things we are going to use now i have created two fields okay now i'm going to create another field which is going to be a very very important field actually i'm going to make it as a text field only and here i'm going to uh, put a field name as class name we are going to pass this parameter as well i'm going to put this as 250 for now highest uh, one okay and uh, let's make another field as the method name that is also going to be very very important so let's keep this as method name here this is very easy to query the data okay for query purpose we are going to do this length i'm just gonna keep it let's say 100 there is not going to be a method name which is more than 100 so it's up to you guys we can just manage this is all you know uh, admin stuff that you can manage okay now i'm just going to save hit save you can create another uh, different different fields that you want a very important field again i want to create here is something called reference id now you can keep this null or it's up to you guys okay so i want to put this as a reference id here or a reference number you can just keep anything here okay again i'm putting is 250 so this reference id is very very important again i'm going to show you guys why it is going to be important so if you have let's say uh, a project if, if, if you have a project where you have something called orders or applications or whatever you have some unique name there so it is this field is going to store that unique value you can again create a uh, timestamp uh, all different things you can keep i can even uh, create that but again again this record is going to get created you can just consider that created date as the timestamp there now uh, very very important let's create our first logic so usually i love to build um, you know i love to build all these things uh, let me open this developer console here and put it here so i love to build a lot of utilities so in your project if you don't have a utility class you better make them make one so i'll just make utility class here okay you can just name anything i am going to create some uh, 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 best practices videos for apex again so in this uh, utility class what i'm going to do is i'm going to create a static method okay so let's create a create now you can just name it e log or error log whatever uh you know what are the method you want now in this e log what we are going to do is we are going to create a record of this error log here so i have created an error log custom object here i have created these fields where class name uh, method name even error message and stack trace so the stack trace and error message these are going to be very very important for us so what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this uh e log here so let's uh, create an e log okay let's initiate this now after initiation i can just choose e log now let's put a class name here which is going to be our variable that we are going to pass into this method okay so let's put a c name for now an e log dot uh, method name here which is going to so it's up to you guys to pass all these you know uh, parameters now we have a stack trace okay very very important so stack trace then let's say message or not message what is the field here it's a error message so let's put this error message okay now again a reference id i said so this is a reference ID again optional okay this is going to be optional so uh, ref id so what i'm going to do here i'm just going to put a check here okay ref id so string dot is blank okay i'm going to basically check if my reference id is blank or not uh if it is not blank then you basically can update this okay uh so all these things are here now it's time to see if okay we have all the fields and now insert this e log ideally you can create multiple things you can just bulkify this right now it is just going to you know put just one you can bulkify this as well okay now obviously I, I will get error because i have to give these things as parameter so let's put this 
parameter again or you know what I will do one thing I can just put instead this method name and all these things and then string ref ID these I will put and then I will basically pass as exception ex so on this exception ex here I'm going to use this uh, get message method which is going to basically return me the message of that exception now here again uh, this is going to be stack tracing so I'm just going to use this exception from here okay that's it and let's try to save I hope this gets saved now this is basically saved so uh, let's try to use this let's see how we can uh, you know uh, let's see if we can have at least uh, some data here now again I will have the error logs here okay so all these logs are going to be here let me create a view as well uh, in this view let me pass this stack trace let me pass method name error message class name record ID and uh, reference ID actually not the record ID so let's put this stack trace in the last uh, I hope these are all the things that I have wanted okay so these are the things we will have in our uh records now let's create something let's let's taste this okay so uh for this i'm just gonna create a class okay test um, it, or i'll just name it tutorial class here for now okay now i'm going to create a method okay public static uh, void um, tutorial method okay now in this method what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to do some uh, try catch block first of all okay this is my try block then this is my catch block here I have I'm getting the exception okay and now here in this try block let's say I'm uh, I will create something uh, some query so let's create account here okay now usually this kind of issues you will be facing in production or in, in your uh, testing scenario so select ID okay name from account where name is equals to let's say I'm just going to give this random uh, variable here there will not be any account here and I still want to use let's say string name is equals to account dot name so ideally since this value is blank this will be uh, you know uh, the string name will be uh, let's let's uh, make it let me open a string class here string class apex let's let's uh, try to apex string class there should be a class here hopefully this is one I think they have changed it Mm, okay we have another idea then let me use uh, let me basically you know string dot value of okay what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this string dot value of and here I'm going to pass this method my name now obviously this name is going to be null here so this string dot value of will fail here okay that's what we are going to catch here now ideally a lot of people i have seen they put system or debug statements but here we are going to use this utility class method dot okay is create e log and here we are going to basically pass all these parameters so we have a name method name then reference id and exception so basically i'm going to pass uh, here the name of my class here this is basically tutorial class okay then we have method name basically you can pass all these method names here and then let's uh, I'm not gonna pass any reference ID for now I'm going to pass it null and then I'm going to pass my exception here okay so this is what we are going to do now okay now I have saved this now let me just call this method from uh, a debug uh, here so tutorial class dot put method here so if I call this method okay, it should fail somewhere now if it fails i should be having you can see i have a one um one error log here and this error log will have all the data for example what is the, what is failed here 
list has no rows for assigned to s object now obviously i do not have any account with the name this this a all these things and obviously i am basically converting that name value into a string again here and using it here no i'm just doing this for going into the cache block your code might fail obviously in most of the cases where let's say you have some null value you are assigning it to something you don't have any data from your queries or you know there are 10,000 different exceptions that you will face so these are all kinds of exceptions that you are you can store in this error message then again the stack trace so at which line it is failing so first of all I'm calling this from anonymous block okay so obviously on anonymous block this is line uh, column line number one column number one and in this toot method it is failing basically at line number five so if you see line number five this one here and here there is no uh, data here obviously so it is going to fail now I can put a reference ID here also for example I have uh, seen a lot of projects where there are some different orders are getting created so let's say there is an order ID that you can also pass here in in this uh, reference ID so let's say if I pass here you know one two three or whatever let's say I pass this certain number right now I'm hard coding this okay so let's say I you know I do this again here okay I'm just gonna call this again and I will have another record here so you can see this is the reference number so the most important thing is whenever let's say I'm passing my reference ID as my order ID here okay some order is failing at my side so I can just search this okay once I search this ideally I should be having this error lock now obviously it's not coming into search I have to uh, make again settings for this I had up actually I had selected this uh, option here for the search allow search is here but right now I'm not sure why it is not coming so let's just query it for now but ideally that is the most important thing that you can just search this uh, reference ID and it should be available into okay you can see it is coming here now so this error log it is coming here uh, and you can see if I search my specific ID only it will it will come here so it is a best practice to pass your own reference IDs here which are very very important uh, let's say in, in this try block I'm creating one order I'm creating uh, you know application where you, or any record which has auto number that number you can actually pass here okay uh, this is the uh, you know basic thing that I just wanted to share with you guys I hope you understood uh, very interesting uh, logic uh, this is because you can just simply query all these records and you can figure out where your class where your method where your code is basically failing so that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you in the next one